making an online form with Breezing Forms. Before we log in at your website we should first make sure we have a list of the fields required on the form. Whether making a form for yourself or as a client brief, be sure you have an outline of the requirements. In our demonstration we will create a form to gather information from website users about attending a meeting. At the meeting we will offer some refreshments. We need to ask the attendees what type of drink or snack they prefer so we can prepare for our guests. In our list, the fields begin with 1. Full name. 2. Email address. 3. Phone number. About asking for an email address, it is always a good idea to include this. Email is often used to confirm entries. Most web based forms contain an email address field. In our scenario, the name and phone fields will be useful if the event organizer needs to contact the person later, perhaps on the day of the event. From the administrator's home page, select components in the upper menu. A drop list appears. Click Breezing Forms. You will then see Breezing Forms Manage Records page, the default. In the column to the right you will see a number of options. Choose Manage Forms. Then click New from the menu in the upper left, it's a large green button marked New. The next page is more elaborate. One can generally think of this page as three columns. The left is the menu with Breezing Forms functions. The center, topped by three amber-colored buttons. This is where elements are shown and ordered. The right column is where an element settings will be edited. It might be helpful to think of it like this, however right. the name is your system name for this form. Here we will entitle the form, Meeting Refreshments. We can name the form, Meeting Refreshments 01. Then, it is a good idea to add some information in the description, because one might return to this form much later, or another administrator may review. The description will help you and other administrators understand this form's purpose. Next, for our example we will select the last page's thank you page checkbox. We will need to add a page for this later. Then we select the mail notification checkbox and add an email address to the following field mail recipients. This tells Breezing Forms to email an alert when a form is submitted. The email address is specifically for an administrator or someone with an executive role. For our example, other settings on this page can be left to their defaults. Be aware. This is very important. Near the top of the right column, and at the bottom you will see a button Save Properties. Click this quite often, and always before saving the form, or moving to another part of Breezing Forms. There is a major difference between Save Properties and the Save button with a green tick in the upper left. Think of the Save Properties as a temporary setting to allow speedy form building. The properties are not stored on your website's database. However the save in the upper left will write all of the properties to the database, setting your form. So for now, click Save Properties, then Save in the upper left, and we can add the first page of the form. Click the New Page Amber button in the center column, a page will be added. Select the new page, usually page 1. Now we can add a section or elements to this page. For our example form we do not need sections, so we will add elements directly to the page. Click the Amber New Element button. A tab will appear called Untitled Element. The right column will change showing its element properties, labels, and names. Each field can have a label which is the text a person is shown. It's displayed with the field on the form. Each field must have a field name. Breezing Forms will automatically add this, but you might find it somewhat obscure. Let's change this to full name. Notice there are no spaces. Make sure in the right column, the type is set to text field. A field's label and name are similar to the form's title and name, in that, one is a system setting, and the other is published. Value, and placeholder. Value. We can add a preset value if we wish, not appropriate here. We can also add a placeholder which puts a hint within the field. This is usually used when space is restricted on the finished page so one can avoid extra space for the field label by placing the label within the placeholder. We don't need this for our form, so both the value and placeholder fields can stay empty. Size and Max Length The size field governs how long the field is when shown on the page. This is largely governed by modern templates. So again we can leave this empty. The max length field however may be useful because it prevents a person entering too many characters into the field. For our example it is unlikely a person's full name is longer than 64 characters, so we will set this as the limit. 
In other cases it is a useful method for quality control. A postcode might only be 12 characters long so setting the max length means a person cannot enter too many characters. Hint. We can add some text here to help the person. If a field has some ambiguity, or you feel it is possible a person might be confused, then this is not only helpful to the person, but can improve quality control. Generally it is considered best practice to give website users a good experience. Hence, if a few notes helps them complete the form quicker and more accurately, it may be worthwhile adding a hint. Validation. The concept is quite simple. To check inbound information is as expected. However, in practice it can be very complicated. One of the important factors of validation is screening hacked content. Another is to improve data quality. Breezing forms makes the most common requirement simple, with a few clicks. Here we want to insist a person adds their name. We choose the required checkbox. For an email field we can also select the library option. This displays a field where we can add an error message. Something like, please check your email. Then choose from a select list of built-in options. In the case of an email field, we can choose valid email. So a person adding an incorrect email will see our error message. With our element set we can now save properties then, don't forget to click save in the upper left too. Now let's add radio buttons. Radio buttons should not be confused with checkboxes or checkbox groups. We should never use just one radio button, always use two or more. In our example form we will use this technique for the question, favorite hot beverage. First, add a new element to our form page. Then choose the element type. Now we select radio group. The page will change to show the options for this type of element. Most of the options are just like the earlier full name field. However we have a special option for radio buttons, the group field. Breezing Forms places some defaults within the text area. A number one, a semicolon, a yes, note the capital Y, a semicolon and yes again but in lower case. This is the format for the radio group. The number signifies if the button should be selected by default. In our example all the numbers will be zero, no default. The yes with the capital Y is the label shown on the form. This is what the reader will see. Finally the lowercase yes is where we enter the value that is recorded to the database. An important attribute of the radio button is that, when a person selects a button it sets the value, if they choose a different button in the group, that new value is chosen. So there is only one option selected at any time, a previous choice is deselected. For our example form the options are, T, coffee latte, coffee cappuccino, hot chocolate. So in the group field we enter, zero, semicolon, T, semicolon, and lowercase, no spaces, T. Then, zero, semicolon, coffee latte, semicolon, and lowercase, no spaces, coffee lat. Then, zero, semicolon, coffee cappuccino, semicolon, and lowercase, no spaces, coffee cap. Finally, zero, semicolon, hot chocolate, semicolon, and lowercase, no spaces, hot chalk. Notice again we do not have spaces in the last setting. These are recorded to the database, it's really a reference for administrators. Imagine a spreadsheet, the column headings for this would be RT, coffee lat, coffee cap and hot chalk. The same format is used for the select list, a drop menu. So if you prefer to use a select list, rather than the radio group it uses the same technique, but includes a field for multiple selections, so a user can choose more than one item from the list if you wish. Remember to always save properties. Then click save in the upper left. With our fields in place we are almost ready to test our new form. Remember I said we would add the thank you page later? Now is the time. In the center column you can now see a tree. Each element is a branch from the page, and the page is a branch of the form. Within the topmost tab in the center column, you should see the form name. Click to select this. Then click the amber button above for a new page which is added to the end of your form. Let's add a message to the thank you page. Now we have a second page, click to select it. In our example it's simply page 2. The right column changes, and you should see page properties. There is a link, edit for the intro. Click this. You will then see an editor, add your message here and click save. This returns you to the previous page. Click Save Properties and once again, click Save in the upper right.
There are lots of handy functions you will pick up in time. For example, we can change the order of the fields by clicking and dragging up or down the tree. Adding a link to a brazing form. First, navigate to the administrator's homepage, the control panel. Select menus from the top menu bar. Choose a menu name to add your link. On our test site this is the main menu, but if you are on a live production site make sure it is either a discrete link that can't be found easily or, better still, set the viewing access to special, so only administrators logged into the front of your website can see it. Having chosen which menu to use, select New. The large green button, upper left. You will then see a new page for this purpose. This is the standard Joomla menu manager procedure. A field, menu item type, appears near the top. Click the select button. A page of options should appear, usually starting with articles. Breezing forms will be on this list. Clicking the name Breezing forms displays an option add form. Click this. The settings on this page are all standard so please follow your normal routine adding this link. Remembering this is a proof thing and best not to display to public pages. Next, to tell the Joomla menu manager which form you would like to display, you should see a tab upper left. Add form. Click this. The next page has multiple options, but for our purposes, we only need the first field, form name. Here enter the name you set within brazing forms earlier. Please remember our notes on the form name and form title. Save your menu linked. Now view the front of your website, following your link should display your form. If indeed you set this to special only, remember to log in at the front of site too. Finally, please remember when editing dynamic websites one should take account of cache. There are many methods used by networks to exploit cache. This can cause a lot of confusion when administrators are changing pages and forms. Joomla has cache clearing facilities built in, and most web browsers will allow for refresh. Yet sticky cache can still be a problem. If you change your form please clear all cache, website and browser when proofing.